Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to another top quality Yu-Gi-Oh! video. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe before you realise we do absolutely fucking terrible content and then it's too late to do so. Although this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. You may have something wrong with you and you should possibly seek help. For today's video, we're going to be doing a rundown of a banlist wish list, shall we say. Uh, the banlist is fast approaching. We've got about a month left before it comes out at the time of recording. So I wanted to have some uh, discussion on cards that I would like to see come off the list, go on the list, that kind of thing. This isn't a banlist prediction, although I am trying to base these in some sort of reality because I have some wild picks that I'd like to see off the list, but let's not get into that until towards the end of the video I guess but yeah let's get stuck in and talk about what I'd like to see changed on the list so I'd like to preface this by saying there's two possibly three cards that I absolutely think need to be fucking checked on this goddamn list although the possibility is that we don't necessarily see it in in kind of full fruition as I'd maybe like to see so the first one to note is of course Chris Drum Halka Fibrax this card is absolute bullshit there's no question about it it employs or sort of encourages so many different degenerate strategies. However, there is one other card that we could possibly see hit in its place, in my opinion. Either this or Linkross need to go. Linkross is another just bullshit card that just allows way too much stuff to go on. I believe it's banned out in the OCG, so don't be surprised if it follows suit here. I do think Halka Fibrax is way less bullshit when you take cards like that out of the equation, because although it's pretty insane being able to chew out free materials and that kind of thing, it's not quite as nutty when it doesn't have this insane full card combo to go through. And the second of my choices on this list would be VFD, True King of All Calamities, for those of you who aren't familiar with that term. This card is absolute bollocks. It shouldn't exist in the game. I hate cards that just blank and stop the opponent playing at all, despite the fact that I use Mystic Mind, but let's not let's not get into that. Mystic Mind can be out a hell of a lot easier. Um, but VFD is absolute bullshit. Uh, I think cards like that, Kalayuga, uh, Zexal, they could all fucking go, in my opinion. I don't like cards that bring the game down that much. In my opinion, something like Mystic Mind, yeah, sure, it's bullshit. I should probably accept that. It should probably be in the mix, too. But if it is, I think there's an awful lot of cards that could come off to make it a little bit more balanced towards combo centric decks but again my personal opinion is vfd way too easy to abuse uh zexal is another card that's going to see format after format of abuse here and there and kaliuga is another one that again just depending on what decks are top of the meta are going to affect whether those cards are in play and once they are they're just bullshit blanket stop your opponent playing cards they can all fucking go in my opinion so for the first part of the cards that I would like to talk about outside of the kind of generic ones that possibly need to go, I'd like to start off with Infernoble Knight. And there's three cards in my mind that could potentially be hit and be still somewhat realistic. We have to remember that the deck hasn't been out that long. Konami's still going to want to ship product. They're still going to have the possibility to reprint cards that go along with these. And I'm not a big fan of killing off decks too quickly. I like to see them just tapped in ways that stop them being absolute bullshit. So the three contenders for me are Divine Sword, Phoenix Blade, Smoke Grenade of the Thief, and Isolde. With Divine Sword, Phoenix Blade, it's just an infinite source of materials, and of course the fact that it just banishes things doesn't really mean anything, because they get banished and then they get brought back for free with the way the deck plays. So Divine Sword, Phoenix Blade, just the fact also that it's not once per turn is another just bullshit thing that doesn't deserve to be there uh, and then that leads us quite nicely into smoke grenade of the thief which is again more of the same issue it's a card that can be used not only for hand knowledge we see it ripping cards out of hands we see it getting used multiple times per turn it's bad enough the connector and dolphin is a combo which is like a one card it is old which is just fucking insane but the fact that you can then rip other cards on top of that just makes it absolutely filthy the card needs to go uh, i'm not surprised that they've waited this long because of course they've been able to reprint it so that is something uh, but i do think that it's probably one that's likely to end up on the chopping block so out of my wish list i think that's a pretty realistic prospect and then the last card to discuss here is Isolde. The problem with Isolde is the fact that A, it's stupid easy to make. The fact that you basically have to let your opponent have it for free, the first effect. And if you decide to hit on the second effect, they still get to dump all their equips that they want and go off from there. It makes it an incredibly hard card to deal with. The fact is as well is that even if you hit it, they just make a second one and go off from there. I think limiting it to one is a pretty fair balance and a way to sort of do things, but without killing off the possibility of playing the card. I like the fact that it's there. I think it's good to encourage people to play Infernoble, which is something that Konami is going to want to do. And I think this is probably the best way to balance it is to bring it down to one copy. 
So the next deck I wanted to sort of examine and talk about cards that I'd maybe like to see hit to keep them in check is Dragon Link. Dragon Link's a weird one in the fact that you can kind of look through the deck and if you look at cards on an individual basis, a lot of them really aren't that insane. But for some reason when they're gelled together, they become absolutely nutty. Of course, it's stupid consistent, so it's kind of a weird way that we have to want to hit this deck, but we also want to encourage people to maybe pick up new product that will get pushed out down the line. So there are two cards that I think would be good to see put into check in some description. Uh, LP and Dragon Buster, the fucking equipped guy. I can't remember his full name. Anyway, he's bullshit. Um, LP is one of those cards that I feel like should have been hit in the first instance when Dragon Link was doing all the bullshit shenanigans before. I was surprised it didn't get hit. I'm surprised it hasn't been hit. Um, and I think that it's the next one that kind of needs to be put into check. Being able to summon from deck is kind of a dirty mechanic, especially when you've got cards like Brotor, which can help search you other stuff, uh, and so on and so forth. And that's usually how the deck works. You just keep searching and regenerating resources. And I think that you need to put that into check and a card like LP allows it to do these kind of silly shenanigans. And then if we move on to Buster, Dragon, Destruction, Whelp, Sword thing, wherever the fuck it is, the equipped one, that thing is again another bullshit card. The fact is that Dragon Buster Destruction Sword is another one of these kind of dumb bullshit cards that just blanket stops the opponent playing. And the thing is, it's not just Dragon Link that's going to abuse this card, we're going to see it get abused by other decks along the way if it doesn't get hit on the list. Personally, I'd like to see both of these cards outright banned and just kill them off completely. So the next deck up for discussion for me would be Dinos. We've seen the deck doing absolute bits at a pretty good level, of course, all things considered. We don't really have many events on, but for those that have been able to be held, particularly remote duels, uh, unofficial sims, that kind of thing, we've seen Dinos doing excellent. And the deck is only getting better and better. It's got a really good matchup against a lot of the other combo decks. It outright wins against pretty much any control deck at this stage. It's in a really strong position, but is it going a little bit too far? There are three cards that we could potentially look hit, and well, maybe four, but there's one that I wouldn't like to see happen, so that's why it's not on the wish list, but I will discuss that in a moment. We've got Miscellaneous Saurus, Baby Sarasaurus, and Fossil Dig. The issue with Baby Sarasaurus is that it isn't a once per turn, so it's one of those cards that just continually gets popped, and the deck has so many different ways to do it. The issue is that you just keep generating free resources off of it, and it just spirals out of control. Hitting the card to one, I think, would be a really fair balance to the deck in order for people to still be able to play, still have a pretty good ceiling, but without going absolutely insane. It's also been reprinted, so Konami has made their money's worth. Moving on to Miscellaneousaurus, what doesn't this card do? I really wanted to see it come off the list, it's finally happened, and now it's bullshit. I can kind of see the issues that people were having with this card before. In fact, it's even more bullshit with the stuff that we've got out now. The fact that it's a blanket protection, the fact that it's something that's easily searched in the deck, the fact that it also gives you a free summon, the fact that it just does all of these different things, sets up an entire board. It's a one card starter. It does everything. It protects your board. It starts off your summons. It starts off your entire combo. It does absolutely everything you could possibly ask for. And it's so damn free. I'd also like to note that finally it's had a foil reprint, which is something that I've been calling for for quite a while now in the Gold series, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we potentially saw it get hit. Maybe not necessarily in December, it may happen a bit further down the line, but it is one on my wish list that I would like to maybe see get hit to one. And then the last of these three cards is Fossil Dig. I've thought for quite a while this card is kind of silly. Uh, it's a rotor for the deck. It searches absolutely any dino that matters. It searches Overraptor, which starts your entire lot of plays off. Overraptor searching your misc, and then you just go insane from there, and nobody can stop you or do anything really at that stage. It's just absolutely bonkers. We could potentially hit Overraptor instead, which is where I was going with this fourth option. However, I really feel that it's important for the deck to be playable at all, so I wouldn't like to see Overraptor get hit because I do like dinos. Again, this is a wish list, so there's some personal bias in here. Um, but I think that it wouldn't be good to kill a deck off entirely. It did nothing wrong, but it does need to be kept into check. And something like Fossil Dig to one, potentially in line with the likes of Rotor, would make it way more fair and balanced. So that is it for cards I'd potentially like to see put onto the list. Let's talk about some that I'd like to see come off, including a few that are probably a bit ridiculous, but this is a wish list after all. So we're going to start off with cards that I believe could come off the list and could reasonably happen. So we start off with Electromite to one. Konami hates pendulum decks, so do I, but really they could just do with a little bit of a boost to be playable again. And a card like Electromite allows them to do that. It was definitely absolute bullshit in multiples, but I think honestly it could come back to one and be absolutely fine. The next card, again, is another big personal wish, but something that could realistically happen, and that is 
Beatrice. Beatrice coming off the list either to two or three would be perfect for me. Of course, I'm a big Burn the Abyss fan, so again, this is a huge bias here. We have just seen it reprinted, though. This would help sell some additional product. Of course, people are playing BA with Phantom Knight, which again sells more product. So Konami may want to push that, and that makes it a little bit more realistic to happen. I do also think that it wouldn't be as insane as it was in the past. We're not going to see triple Beatrice on the board very often. Uh, the deck is way too fragile still to do that, but it would put the deck into a good position, and again, it would help shift some of the newer product. The next one is Zodiac Barrage. This deck is actually doing quite well, this format, especially since Tri Brigades come around. People are actually experimenting with the deck uh, and making good use of it, and honestly, I think Barrage could come off the list Almost entirely, potentially even to two, just if they're kind of worried about where things go from here. I'd like to see it back into the mix. And again, they've just reprinted some of the cards, so it'd be nice and easy to sell additional product by going down that route. And the last of my reasonable changes that I'd like to see on the list, ABC Dragon Bus. So just bring the damn thing off. It doesn't do anything. The deck is so dead. It relies so much on the field spell that it can't fucking get into anymore. Uh, it just dies to everything. Honestly, the deck is just a really solid rogue pick at best, even with Buster at three. So just bring the damn thing off. Let ABC players have their fun. The deck isn't going anyway. It isn't going to do anything. And at best, it's going to do a net cross and get the occasional top here and there. And now for some of my... Far less reasonable requests. It is Christmas coming up after all. We might as well get ambitious, right? So the first one is Lunar Light Tiger to 1. That's right. Lunar Light Tiger to 1. I think it would be absolutely fine. Honestly, I'd just like to see it come off. So the deck is playable again. I really fucking enjoy playing that deck. Konami, just bring it back to 1. And I think, honestly, putting Yellow Martin down to 1 would help balance this. Make it so that you couldn't loop it quite as easily. And you'd still be kind of prone to getting the 1, getting hit. Cosmic Cyclone, whatever. And it'd just make it absolutely fragile as fuck. But it means that it would be somewhat playable. The next one I'd like to see happen, and again, this actually probably should be a little bit more in the realistic category, but we know why this has happened kind of under the surface, and that's Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave needs to go back to three. It's making hand traps run absolutely rampant. It makes it even worse the fact that we're in a format where Gamma and Imperm is so, so important that when those other hand traps can go through as well, it just makes it impossible sometimes to play through hands of players on the other side of the board, particularly when they're going second. So Call by the Grave could easily go back to three for me, and I think it should. I don't think the bro Broken decks were taking advantage of it, really. It was more these control decks that were already struggling. I know that there's been some argument that people are saying, oh, it's going to help sell triple tactic talents. It's going to help sell cross out designated when that comes up. Well, it isn't here yet, so I'd really like to see this back at three. And then I have two kind of wild picks. One's actually probably a little bit more realistic now, but I'll get into that detail in a moment. So those two for me are Fairy Tale Snow and that grass looks green. They're absolute bonkers, I know, and some people will be fucking choking on their own spit at this moment, I'm sure, from hearing me say that. Fairy Tale Snow, honestly, I think it could come back. We see in OCG, they've got snow, they've got grass, nobody plays it. You could make an argument for Maxi being the reason for that. Then bring us back Maxi as well. I don't give a fuck. I just really want to play Fairy Tale Snow. I want to be able to play Light Sworn, and that Grass Looks Arena also helps facilitate that. I think it's important to note again that in the OCG, neither of these cards really see any play at all. And the reason I say that this is slightly more realistic, particularly where Fairy Tale Snow is concerned, is the fact that we've seen new Fairy Tale support coming out. It's a possibility that they could just do a retrain instead uh, and make it a bit more of a balanced card. But honestly, I don't see any reason why it couldn't come back. I think they could experiment with it at one. And if it becomes insane, it becomes insane. Again, it is worth just noting at the end of this that this is just a wish list trying to base some of it in reality rather than something that I think Konami will actually do. And that is it for today's video. Hopefully you guys have really enjoyed it. Again, this is something slightly different, a little bit outside of what I would normally do. Of course, it's a weird time at the moment not having locals to go to, but hopefully you have enjoyed the content. On that note, if you have enjoyed the content, I would absolutely implore you to hit subscribe. It's really, really important to show me that the content you're watching is something that you enjoy. Of course, comments and likes are always super welcome too. As a quick note before we go, if you're looking to pick up some singles, you should check the link out in the description to get yourself a nice discount on the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Get yourself a cheeky discount using my link there. If you're interested in something like signed cards, if you're that kind of weirdo, that's something that could be arranged. We can get some cards signed and sent out to you as well. But again, that is it for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.